Nice to meet you. How are you? It's so funny meeting someone on Zoom for the first time. I know. I But I feel like it's just working. Like, I feel like I can still feel you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's almost better than IRL because then we can, we have the, <laughs> we have the shield of the computer. Because in real life, it would be like. <laughs> so nervous. I know. So Petra, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm an artist working in, I guess, photography, directing, curating, and just being a human. That's kind of what I do. And (laughs) what do you do? Well, I'm an actress, a producer, a director, and a very engaged citizen. And how's it going, like, being in quarantine? How's this been for you? I was on such a crazy sort of path where I was just like, go, 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 go. And I also had reminder where I was like, I have to like get back in touch with my humanness and how I like don't have control over anything. Um, How have you been doing that? Like, how have I been doing that? It was funny in the beginning. Do you remember when everyone was like, look at all the stuff you can do. You can be super productive in this time that's chaotic and traumatic, but do all this work. So it was like, That mentality at the beginning was so poisonous and I just went back and did the little more therapy. I was like, I need to like ground myself and change my whole way of life, basically. I'm sure like, I don't know if that's how you felt. You know, I, I, from the beginning thought like, we're going to be in this a long time. This is six, but just how the feelings have evolved from like, really like disbelief that it's happening to like, how can this be our new reality to then just accepting like, okay, I guess we have to find a way to like move forward. You know, like we're not, it's not going to go back anytime soon, if ever, but I had to find ways to like find joy and like connect to things that made me happy and made me inspired. Speaking of having to get creative, um, at the beginning of this year, I gathered with nine other amazing Latina women from business, Uh, politics, organizing, activism. We came together to talk about this all-important election um, in our country this year, Um, but also just longer-term shifting the narrative for Latinas. And we had this big, massive vision for this new community called Chi Se Puede, which is a play on the phrase Si Se Puede, which was coined by uh, Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez, who organized for the rights of farm workers um, back in the 70s. And uh, so the play on Si Se Puede is Chi Se Puede. We thought that was clever. And we had these plans to to get on the ground, to go across the country, to be in person and inspire each other. And then like, boom, quarantine happens. And, you know, your first thought is like, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to do anything. How are we going to reach people? How are we going to start conversation? And just learning to how to get creative and how to, how to create community in these virtual spaces um, was a new exercise for all of us. And you're just learning. It's trial by fire and we're just learning, but it's been amazing to see how effective we can be. I was really afraid. Yeah. And I didn't feel, I felt a void of creativity. So you did, but you feel like you're getting it back now or like you're starting to inch into it. What are you, what are you doing at home? That's creative. I take photos and I um, do moving images and I couldn't necessarily do that in quarantine. So I decided that I would just learn more, which is what has always moved my creative process along, Mm. just learning and like expanding your mind. It's the only thing that you can do to create change or difference in your work. So that's kind of, I was like, okay, I have to start with this and then I'll slowly start doing that. I don't know. What did you do in the beginning? Were you like, yeah, in the beginning, I was seven months pregnant <laughs> with my second child. So, oh my was, God. so the first couple of months were just all consumed with like, what what is this going to be like to have a baby in the midst of this quarantine? You know, I'm not going to lie. It was really nerve wracking. And I had been going, going, going. And so in the beginning, it was a real opportunity to just rest and and um, sit with the feeling of, like you said, never really having control over anything. And, and there, I think there was a little bit of freedom in that. Like I felt a real- So much freedom, yeah. <laughs> this relief of like, 
like everything I had committed to was just sort of like off my slate. Yeah. Like as a, as a person who thrives on creativity and inspiration, when you're doing so much, there's no room to take anything in. No, there isn't. To just create yeah. the space to like breathe and have room to take new things in, in these hard times, you, you, you discover new ways that we can connect and create. Yeah. Anytime I do my best work, it's when I'm totally like unbothered by the world and in this state of, which is like a childlike state. You're so naive, but you're so on point and smart and you're kind of like so tuned into your body. And I think like the people that can maintain that are are the true artists because you're really working in this space where you're not affected by anything. And I mean, art and creativity is playing basically. It's what I've been doing and I'm sure what you've been doing since you were little and you just continue to do it, which is oh, so- what I've done and now what having children allows me to do again. My son is two, almost two and a half years old. And like yesterday we spent 45 minutes having a imaginary picnic, you know, and there's nothing more creative than, no. you know, sitting there and having to to, to be in the world of a two and a half year old, you're absolutely right. They're, they are just with whatever is happening for them. Yeah. And it comes out unfiltered and it's so beautiful. Um, I don't feel like I've been missing creativity because just, you know, stopping everything to, to sit and stare at a snail, you know, and talk about the snail is like, it, it does connect you to your artist self because it, it makes you be present. And I think that's, that is the heart of, of creating anything meaningful. Since you started being an artist, which was a long time ago because you started so young, like the world has changed, right? Yeah. What, like, how do you feel about this current generation of young people coming up now? And what, what do you think that means for like their creativity and their artistry? I've seen so much, so much amazing stuff come out of Gen Z, but I think that they just think they just maybe need to remember that they're kids and they like keep need to keep that like kid self. What do you, I guess, what is your hope for that generation? Well, I think that what's so exciting about artistry, like through generations is that it's not separate from one another, you know, yeah. um, one generation lays a foundation that the next gets to build on or evolve from and grow from. And certainly this current young generation coming up now they're a product of their circumstances, um, but they're, they also have opportunities available to them that didn't exist for us. You know, they no. <laughs> representation and images and, and conversations about mental health, conversations about body image, conversations about gender and sexuality and just authenticity. Each generation sort of paves the path a little bit more for the next generation to then get to evolve the artistry um, of humanity further. And, and yeah. so, you know, I think that's what's exciting and hopeful to me as I look at young artists and their courage and their bravery is stunning, but you have to remember that there's, they can be what they are because people came before them and paved that path. And that's what I hope to contribute is to do my part in, in creating more opportunity so that those coming next can live even more authentically, that, yeah. they, that they don't have to fight as hard as we had to fight to, yeah. to get access, to get representation, to exist as our full and unapologetic selves. I mean, a big thing for me is just making sure that I, I leave space, that I don't occupy any space that I don't need to be occupying. I'm not the one to tell someone else's story. I can only tell mine, but I think it's like, it's so, so important in this like image culture that we're living in that people who, people tell their own stories, period. The best advice that I ever got was to just not stop. I know that's such a simple thing, but a lot of people don't, they don't push through that like uncomfort, um, like being uncomfortable. And I think, I don't know, that to me was most important. But it's, some people are like, okay, thanks when I say that. <laughs> yeah, but I agree with you. I feel like my, my advice is, is similar. I think that it's to not lose sight of how important art and creativity is in the world. It's a gift. Yeah. 
It's a, it is it's a gift to yourself to, to do it. And it's a gift to the world to put it out in the world and share it and not make it about um, your career or your bank mm-hmm. or success, but make it about the, the urgency of it, the, the yeah. need for art in our world. And I think, you know, everything we're talking about right now is that this moment in our history is reminding us that, that it's like there is, we don't have control. You don't have control over who sees your art, where it goes, how successful it is. Like you, you can just do your part, which yeah. is make it. The artist's job is to like be strong enough and to hold the space for the art to come through you. And the rest totally. is not up. It's the rest is not up to you. No matter how much you think that you can control it, it's not. Your job as an artist is just to stay uncomfortable long enough to let the art come through you. Yes. Give it to the world and let it go. Also, I didn't even say in the beginning of America, like you were really important to a lot of me and my friends as growing up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so nice. You're going to like make me teary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm so lovely to talk to you. Lovely to connect. And um, good luck with all of your creativity and all your art while you're, while you're home. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>